Okay. So I think we can uh, we can resume uh, and uh, play a little bit with the concept that we saw until now, right? So we'll start from this code that is uh, the code available for week zero four, okay, in AW weeks. That is the uh, lecture examples, okay? That's the repo I use it to to make the code available to you, okay? Also before lectures and after. Um, so, uh, in this week 04, there are two folders, okay? First, we will have a look at an example of uh, SQL injection, just to show you that it exists, okay? Uh, so, it's actual in uh, an actual project, just to see it once. I don't expect that you, the, the project you submit will have uh, SQL injection issues, okay? Because if you use pa parameterized queries, uh, basically you solve the problem. <laughs> Okay, but just to show you wh what can happen. Okay, and then we will continue with our uh, question and answer server to develop the APIs. Okay, so we will develop the APIs first, des deciding what to do, and then implement some of them. And then I will make the full example available to you after the lecture. Okay, so we use uh, Visual Studio Code as uh, usual. Okay. So I have the two folders opened here. Um, let's close this terminal. Okay. Uh, just opened uh, during the break to, to speed up things. Okay. So this is the buggy version. Okay. Let's have, ha have a look at what happens. Okay. So in the terminal, we will start the, uh, the server. So node index.js as you did in the lab. Okay. Server is ready and waiting for uh, requests. And we use this uh, convenience tool uh, that is the REST client. Right? REST, ah, it's here. REST client, okay. In the lab, somebody, uh, no, the, with the SQLite, somebody had problems. I mean, try one or, or another similar one. I mean, uh, we don't really need to have uh, the exact same extension, okay, to use it here. But uh, I mean, REST client typically works pretty well. Uh, we didn't have problems until now. So this server basically implements three very simple APIs. So question and answers. Uh, that's the example I already made available in week three, I, I think, right? So you send a request uh, for the list of questions, okay? And you get uh, the answer, which is actually Okay, and an array with just one uh, object, right? Okay, there's just one question and then uh, a, a JSON format, as we said uh, last uh, last week. We always use JSON format for, uh, again, this is uh, our choice again, but it's very common nowadays with the web applications, okay? Alternative could be XML, or even the format you like, but you need to parse it and handle it uh, by yourself, okay? With JSON, there are good libraries uh, and so on, so no, uh, no reason to, to change. I mean, to depart from this uh, very well-used uh, pattern, okay? Then request uh, questions and the, all the answers for a given question. You get an array, JSON array, okay? Status 200, okay, fine. I mean, website is working. Can even add uh, new answers, right? So, uh, post on the API answers. Content type application JSON, don't forget this line, which tells uh, the server that the content is encoded in JSON. And on the server side, don't forget to use the ASPS JSON middleware, okay? Some of you forgot this in the lab, and then you don't find the the, uh, the JSON fields uh, in rack body, okay? If you didn't specify the middle, because it, the, the express it itself uh, is not able to interpret JSON out of the box. You need to tell to use J express, yes, uh, JSON. So this allows us to receive uh, with the format JSON automatically? Yes, this allows us to write in, in the callbacks, uh, stuff like this, rec body dot 
something question ID which I sent as uh, a field here in JSON okay because what arrives to the callback in the request is a string and needs to be converted into JSON if the content type of HTTP says it's application JSON and we register the middleware the middleware looks for the other looks if there is a content applica content type application JSON and so it says okay it's JSON I take it I parse it and make it available in rack body otherwise it it's not available in rack body and you search for question ID you'll find undefined standard JavaScript behavior and you don't know why okay that's just because you forgot to, you know to, to specify the middleware okay but if you have problems like this, the labs are there to help you, okay? We will identify this stuff quite quickly. Okay, so the post, what does the post do? Well, it takes uh, what you send and adds it to the database, okay? So no problem, let's try one a post, okay? So this is very standard post, text, the answer, respondent, etc. Okay, no validation yet. At the moment, we didn't do any validation. But we send a request, okay, it replies with a new ID. So in the database now we have, uh, uh, let me see if I can open the database. Yes, big, bigger. Okay, in the database you have the answers, you have a fifth answer, text of the answer and so on, what we sent, okay, has been inserted in the database, okay. Just for this toy, this uh, toy example, okay, I modified the database just you know for you know to play a little bit and I added a, 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 a table users okay users admin admin pass or user one difficult pass whatever you want okay just to show you that with the with SQL injection I can extract information that is in the database without uh, uh, you know writing a query myself on the server side where where I don't have access if I am an attacker right it's just because of a mistake of programming of who designed and implemented the server that we are able to do this kind of things. So let's have a look at the index. Uh, you see the create answer takes the answer, right? And let's go to the implementation, which is actually in the other file. In the, no, didn't go, go to implementation. No. Right, anyway, the implementation is here. It, it doesn't link it for some reason okay we had the create answer okay where we wrote the buggy code insert into answer question ID and so on values etc okay without using the question mark so we just created the the the, the SQL instruction to run in the database okay we were not aware Let's suppose we are not aware of the SQL injection problem, okay? So I sent a normal request, everything worked fine, right? We had a new, a new line, okay? Let's send a different request. Let's send this request, okay? Um, so the request is that the text of the answer is the uh, single, um, uh, quotation mark or you see this very nice construction constructs of SQL you can write or and and so on or select uh, etc where table etc okay I researched a little bit what what to type here how the SQL light tree works inside okay so this basically selected from uh, from this SQLite master, which is an internal table of uh, SQLite tree, okay? And let's extract the table names of the table in short, okay? Let's run this, uh, this query, uh, this, um, this HTTP request, okay? It's not the query, yeah. And in the backend, it will run a query. It inserted a new stuff in the database, right? So, uh, there's a new line. Let's have a look at the line. And the new line is, uh, this line, is a, which is, uh, you know, you see that the text that was, uh, you know, single quotation mark or etc. etc. Now it's question in the database. The database is still on the server, okay? And there's the rest, but I don't care about the rest, okay? I just put it there just to make the 
the request the HTTP request work okay now let's go here and let's ask again for all the answers okay so let's ask again for all the answers and we will get that an answer is as text questions okay that's the name of one table in your database okay and we could do the same to extract uh, let's say all the other tables just to say limit to uh, discard the first and so on with some sql commands okay let's have a look at the last one and then we will stop with this example okay let's assume there's a table or i know there's a table named users in your database which actually is the typical name of the table that contains users and password okay um, and so let's do the same okay so here i just get seven seven is the new id of the answer okay but when i ask for the answers you see here all the answers i get you know this password which is very nice okay to start attacking something <laughs> that's what happens with the uh, uh, sql injection okay so uh the exact uh, same example of the slide doesn't work because for some reasons you know the sqli3 implements uh, all the queries in the way that only the first query is executed so if you put uh, semicolon the rest doesn't get executed but there's still stuff that you can do and you can play okay with like uh, you know retrieving a password is always something nice okay so uh, actually th there are a lot of assumptions i i hoped uh, that uh, there was a username called admin which is not so uncommon and so on but you know th this is the way you know attackers work okay and that's because it was uh, uh, you know the server was vulnerable to sql injection in particular the implementation of uh, you know this uh, um, this function that queries the database if i use uh, uh, oh here i see the the, the query I, I did the console log of the query that's to be executed in the database okay by the way the double dash means just uh, that i write this comment so it doesn't give you a syntax error for the for the query okay but this is more attacking than uh, defending we are focusing on defending okay <laughs> so on implementing things uh, correctly okay uh, but if you implement this stuff with values, uh, question mark, question mark, and so on, and you specify the stuff here, I don't have time to do it now, but uh, I mean, you, you can try yourself. You'll see that the, uh, this stuff will not work anymore. You just, you just insert the string that you passed, and that's all. You don't execute a select and search for the password, etc. Okay, so I hope you realize how dangerous it ca can be if, uh, you know, things are not implemented correctly so we can close this terminal and we can focus on the rest of the lecture which is actually um, uh, developing our uh, exercise so um, uh, there was uh, yes the exercise so the exercise is here and basically says uh, implement an http api server in express for our question and answer example so the project that we are carrying on during the lectures okay so we have uh, questions and list of answers attached to questions so we need first to define a set of apis for the common operations okay in the lab i gave you the operations here uh, let's say uh, i do it uh, on the fly while explaining them okay and uh, for each api we need to decide first uh, the http method get post put delete just one of these four okay and the url okay and then what it takes as parameter what and what send it what sends back okay and then we need to implement them part of this stuff has already been done because uh, I, I gave it to you last week you know in this qa server version one so there were already three three apis the get api questions get api questions id answers so all answers of a given question and add a new answer 
because we, we had to, you know, change, swap the order of the lecture with the lab for, for Easter, okay? Otherwise, I would have probably not given this to you, but shown uh, the, the full example before, okay? And so we will continue that, uh, that example, very simple. So first, uh, this is the readme file. By the way, it's very useful to write this readme file because I will ask you to submit a readme file with your final project for the exam. Because as I was saying to uh, your colleague, uh, one of your colleagues before, the first thing uh, that we do at the exam, well, actually the very first thing is run the server and the client see that everything starts. Otherwise, there's nothing <laughs> to do, okay? And then uh, if uh, it starts, so uh, the client shows something, uh, we will have a look at this file. So this uh, readme file that explains all the APIs, not, all the, not only the APIs, there will be something else, like the routes, what, what, uh, what are the tables in the database, but we will give instruction for this, okay? I, if you are just curious, just go to the, uh, on the exam page, and there's the link with the other courses of previous years, and you see all the instruction and so on. We just need to update it for, for, this, uh, for this course, uh, you know, detailing better what we expect for the security part, okay? But in short, you will have to list the APIs because the APIs make us understand what you thought when you developed uh, your project, okay? Because they are the interface between the client and the server. They are the way in which uh, uh, the client and the server exchange data. So if we know w what the client can ask and what the server can reply, we understand how, more or less, how your application works in terms of functionalities, okay? Each one of you will have a different idea. It's not a problem. This is not a problem. I mean, most of you will come out with very similar ideas because the project is not so big, uh, so you have not so many degrees of freedom. But, uh, so if you do things well, if you do things wrong, <laughs> so many. But, uh, I mean, um, you, uh, every, Everybody will have uh, maybe a different idea on how to call the APIs uh, or what exactly each API should return. Should the post return the ID, the, fo the whole object, uh, something, uh, part of the object and so on. All these kind of things are variation which are, are uh, you know, com completely reasonable and they will make a difference between your project and your colleague's project, okay? No problem about this. Uh, but you will have a complete uh, freedom in deciding which APIs you need to implement and uh, what are the names and the methods and w what they require in terms of uh, data and what they should answer, okay? So it's completely up to you. You are designing your web application from scratch, okay? Not starting from scratch because at the end of the course you will have both our example, our complete example, the one here in the lecture, and uh, your example that you carry on in the lab, okay? So you will have our uh, view of the solution, let's say, and your view of the solution for the lab, okay? And by the way, we also put online the solutions for the lab, so you will also have our view for the solution of the lab, okay? A possible solution, okay? This is programming, so it's always a possible solution. If you are in doubt and you would like to do something different, just ask during the labs, typically, okay? So we have time to discuss the different options and so on. You can also ask during the lecture, but you, we have a time constraint, so we, maybe we cannot really discuss single points or single ways of doing things uh, as you really like, okay? Okay, so we have three APIs, uh, get, get, post. We'll try to stick to this format, MD, which is a standard uh, uh, markdown format, okay, markdown format, markdown form, uh, format, okay. Uh, but just because it's easier to read, uh, it's sort of HTML, but it's sort of simplified HTML because you don't need to write HTML, you just need to write, you know, special symbols to make an header or to make uh, quoted code and so on, okay? Very, very simple. But just because uh, uh, you can have a nice preview, like the, uh, uh, the Visual Studio Code does and the GitHub does. So you see, this is all mark markdown. Also here, okay? This is 
nice and very easy to write, okay? But I mean, it is not fundamental. You don't really lose points if, if you write in a different way. I mean, as long as we can understand, okay? So, um, let's think about other APIs that can be useful for our application, okay? So, there are all the questions, all the answers for a given question. So think in terms of designing on your application. At a certain point, you would like to see the list of questions, right? And the list of questions takes data from the first API. Get questions. And then you click on a question, and we would like to see the answer for that question. And the second API does exactly this. Then at a certain point, you see, well, the, those guys don't understand anything. I would like to add my answer that is the correct one, okay? So I would like to add an answer to a given question. So post API answer, okay? That's a post I would like to add. When you add something, that's always a post. The difficult thing is to understand where a post is needed when it's not just an add, okay? And we'll, we'll make example, okay? And then, uh, well, actually, we would like to have at least the, the classical uh, uh, CRUD operations, okay? Create, read, update, and delete, okay? Because, uh, you know, uh, you want to add something, you would like to be able to delete something, right? So, uh, how, how do we delete? I mean, we just uh, add a new API, okay? Uh, with this symbol here. No. Five. Doesn't work. Well, let's copy and paste. <laughs> Probably the keyboard is not set correctly. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Delete. Okay. So delete. That's the HTTP method, and uh, we need to decide the URL. There's no problem in reusing the URL as long as uh, the uh, uh, HTTP method is the same. Is um, different. Answers. Okay. Okay, but we would like to delete a specific answer, right? Uh, you remember the table that I showed you last time? Uh, I mean, take, take those uh, stuff as a guide. Um, uh, let's see the APIs. You remember here, the delete, delete for docs doesn't make sense. We delete everything. So we delete something for a specific uh, element. So how do we specify it? Well, we can specify it uh, as before, okay, for the get. I write it here with the, my, uh, with the less and greater than sign, but it doesn't really matter if you would like to write it like this, uh, as you would use it uh, in the callback, that's fine. I mean, this is just a list, okay? This is just for reading. And it's not for, for coding. For coding, you need to have the colon, otherwise it doesn't work, okay? So let's stick with the same notation, okay? And then uh, we would like to have the update, right? Do we really need to update something? Uh, well, it depends. Um, let's try to have an update, yes. Um, um, so let's say I typed something wrong, I would like to edit my answer. Okay, that's the use case. Fine, okay. Put API answers uh, ID. Okay, again ID. Why ID? Because I can update just one answer at a time. Okay, uh, as we were saying, we were seeing here as well. Okay. Fine, and let's say for the moment could be enough, okay? Um, uh, is there a score? Yes, okay. Um, no, not, not enough. Let's one, do one thing more, okay? So we can delete an answer, we can update an answer, okay? We are a bit generic here now. Uh, well, delete is very simple. I mean, uh, it deletes the answer, nothing really. Uh, we don't really need to add anything uh, in terms of explanation. Put, put can be a bit ambiguous because we can update just a part of the answer, like the title, the respondent, etc. 
or the whole answer and so on. So when we write a specification for the API, we need to decide these kind of things and then implement the corresponding behavior. Okay. Um, just note also that uh, we don't uh, need to get everything right at the first time. Okay. Of course, I can do it uh, right. Uh, I have the solution here. Okay. But we, we typically don't have the solution. We think in terms of what can be useful. We start to implement the, th the things and then uh, we will go back if we feel that something is wrong and we will modify them. Okay. No problem. It's programming as, as, as usual, as you do with programming. If at a certain time you, you realize that something is wrong, you go back and change your approach. Okay. In, in the worst case, you'll delete everything and you start from scratch. Sorry, but, uh, eh, eh, but maybe let's say I missed uh, an API. Well, I go back and I add the API and now I have the API and let's see if I can make it work and so on. Okay. So probably I will forget something while programming. Okay. So, um, I would like to add one more functionality that is, uh, um, vote and answer. Okay. Uh, give a vote. Uh, uh, let's write it here. Vote and answer. Answer. Uh, that means uh, um, adding, uh, I mean, incrementing or incrementing or decrementing the vote, the score, actually, we say the, the score, yes score of an answer okay i'm focusing on this uh, thing because it's a bit more difficult okay you remember that uh, um, well in the database uh, we have answers uh, yes uh, and the answers have a score like uh, you, you're familiar with stack overflow and this kind of websites uh, you can up vote or down vote so say this is bad i download it don't vote it uh, or this is really good there should be the first answer in the list okay that's more or less the same functionality um so how do we implement a function like this which method would you like to use let's say well that's api answers Let's leave the metaphor for after, okay? Because it's more difficult. Uh, there's a specific answer, so it's fine to have the ID, okay? Uh, we would like to vote it, okay? So it means, uh, say, plus one, minus one, maybe plus two, minus two, depending on what we would like to say, okay? If it's just a single action, if we don't specify anything in the body, there can be only a single action. If we specify something in the body, you can say whatever you want, up, down, how much, and so on. Okay. So to decide what to put here, we need to think uh, first, uh, um, does the operation modify the status of the server? Potentially, I mean, everything can go wrong always. Okay. But if everything goes fine, is everything is fine. Uh, does it modify the status of the server? Yes. Okay. Because then there will be a record which is different in the server. That is the record of the answer as a score, which is different plus one, minus one, whatever we did. Okay. So first this modifies the status of the server. So it's not a get. The get doesn't modify the status of the server. Uh, if I send it again, the result is the same. If I send plus one and then I send again plus one, is the result the same? No. Okay. So it's not uh, idem potent. Idem potent. I said last time, but pro correct pronunciation idem potent. Okay. So if you repeat it again and again, does the result stays the same or not? If not, it's not idem potent. So everything which is not idem potent, we only have an option. That is post, okay? Post. Okay. But now we have a post API answers ID, which is actually more or less what we said we would like not to have, right? 
this is the first place where we need to let's say deviate a little bit and use a bit of fantasy to decide uh, what you we should use okay this is not a relationship uh, between two collections as we say well just use meaningful URLs okay so let's say uh, API fine answers that's a collection of answers that's a specific answer to the first part is fine I mean we would like to identify an answer and then well we have no alternative uh, we can write an action here vote is fine okay just give a, 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 UR, a unique URL also because you could have another uh, another uh, action okay we he, here we have scores uh, um, yeah there's nothing that makes sense to modify um, by the server side well except for the date maybe updated the date and also something like this but but, but maybe, i mean we, you could have a uh, different actions okay so if you would like to have different action actually they're all posts uh, if they modify the status of the server in a way that is not even potent so you need to find a different url url okay so fine let's uh, let's try to implement uh, this uh, um this stuff okay uh so um well the delete is really simple uh let's focus uh, on the put for a while okay uh well first uh, the put should be um um okay should be described okay i i don't really um want you to describe too much especially at this example there will be a template for that okay um, but uh, uh, let's try to write a description just once just to see what we can write okay let's copy something okay you know programming programmers likes to copy like to copy I mean copying from example is fine coping between you for the exam is not okay among you so description just for the exam when you're collaborating with colleague that's fine right because in, in companies and so on uh, the, the important thing is the result describe descriptions uh, update uh, an answer right um, okay I think that nothing more to say for the update, right? So what should say? What should we say? Um, I mean, here we could decide, for instance, would you like to have a partial update, or every time we send an, a put, we should update everything in, in in the content of the answer? That's up to us. I mean, there are no requirements here. There's no project at the moment, uh, so I just, uh, you know, a, a few guidelines, uh, they just, uh, just this stuff, uh, no, the exercise, okay? Which actually didn't say anything particular, okay? But when you have your application, you will know if uh, you would like to have, uh, you know, um, a, a, an API that does more or less, because it depends on, you know, on, on your client. Uh, you would like to have the client to do all the things uh, uh, once. Uh, uh, you would like to have partial updates. Uh, uh, I mean, depends on how you designed uh, your application. Okay? Maybe it's not completely clear in the beginning. While you are developing your application, you decide. Okay? Let's start with an idea and let's see what happens. Okay? Let's say by sending the whole the by sending the whole content sending the whole content which is by the way the simplest thing because if we are if we are sending a part of the content either we write different uh, sql queries uh, each one for each field in the in the um, in each answer field or in some ways we read the content and then we just uh, change and update everything okay so if we just uh, you know take what arrives and put it into the database that's easier okay 
So a request body, an object representing an answer, content type application JSON, that's fine. Okay, that's the example, um, which is fine. Response, so here we should also decide which are the return codes. Okay, I mean, this is just, just uh, for post 201, but 200 is fine as well, okay. I mean, typically the, the other uh, API returns 200, uh, success. Or, well, there will always be this error, 500, 503, whatever you want, in case the, the database cannot run the query. This is especially true during development, because you mistype the, the query and so on, okay? Typically, when you run your final application, you, you know, at the exam, it shouldn't happen, typically. Uh, but if you have uh, a database server which is not on the same machine and the same process of your web application, for some reason it might fail. You cannot connect to the database. You, you know that sometimes you, you open a website, uh, you try to do something and say it's a database not available and you cannot do anything. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's what happens here, okay? Uh, just because maybe, I don't know, they're doing my maintenance or there has been a problem for some reason, the, the machine crashed, uh, the power was uh, power uh, supply was not available and so on, okay? Okay. So a generic error, we will think in terms of what 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 we can return in when when there are errors. But let's not try not to focus on too many details at, at least in the beginning. We don't really need to document really everything. I mean, if uh, there's an error, we will send some information about the error. But we don't really need to be so specific. I mean, this is not just the you know the the documentation for your company where it's better to be as much specific as possible, okay? This is just to get an idea and uh, mm, at least write uh, very important things. Response body in case of success, this is important, okay? Is there anything that uh, we should return from a post? Oops. Uh, uh, no, no, not a post, uh, this is a put. From a put, from the post, of course, a post is an ID the ID, the new ID, which is computed by the database. Do we need an idea? I mean, the idea is already available. It's a put and the ID should be the same. So there's no point in returning the ID. Should we return the updated object? That's a possibility. Okay. Why, why should you return something that should be exactly as you sent? Because sometimes the server would like to make small adjustment of what you sent, okay? That's uh, the official explanation if you look uh, around. But uh, I mean, let's keep things simple, okay? N none, no response body, okay? It's possible, right? Just have a look at the slides. Um, no, we, where were the slides? Uh, Express uh, actually the HTTP methods. Uh, uh, what are the HTTP? You see, put response body may be present. It's not mandatory. Okay. Well, in the get, of course, there's a response body. Otherwise, there's no. What we, what are we getting? We don't get anything. Okay. So typically, the response body is uh, uh, is optional. Okay. Uh, okay, so update. Now we define a bit more about the update. We can start implementing the update. Okay, let's go and implement the update. So uh, let's take uh, the yeah the post. We copy and paste uh, the post, and we make the update. Okay, so update. Update. Okay, API answers, and we say that it was an ID, right? Yes. That's just a comment for you, or oh, for me. So this is a put. Okay, here you can just you just write get put uh, post delete. No other options. API answers. Remember, here the parameter need the colon. Okay. Uh, uh, one of you asked me during the break. Uh, is ID supposed to be an integer? No. 
this is uh, uh, URLs are strings okay so this is just a string so how do we know where the ID start well the ID starts after the slash API slash answers slash okay so everything that is after is the ID okay that's the way Express matches this variable part of the path okay uh, API and uh, let me see what what I was writing before but I mean just to not to lose too much time okay um, if you have different ideas just tell me okay so put um, we get uh, an object okay answer I mean this stuff could could fit here okay so as I was saying before mm, this is uh, what comes uh, from the request so from this API HTTP this is a post that we didn't uh, write the put yet but I mean well we let's write it so uh, you know how to write it so uh, you would like to make put here okay and uh, con the type application JSON and so on answers we need to put a number here let's say five no no okay this is the request we cannot send it now because we didn't finish the implementation yet right so okay so that's the answer and you'll find in rec body all the field that you sent with the JSON because we registered the JSON middle where as I was saying before okay and then and then we need to do the update right so we need a different function for the database update answer because it answer. because it needs to run a different query update right so add a new answer then I'll search for the code and uh, I will not waste uh, so much time in developing all the stuff. Update the answer, okay? But once you do it uh, for, for once uh, in the lab and then you copy and paste and you have it ready uh, until the end of the course, even for the project, okay? Update the answer, okay? So, uh, update answer, right? Update, update answer. And then we'll implement all this function with the, the promise. They are a synchronous function. They're working on the database. They, we don't know when they finish. Okay. Uh, so update answers. Uh, what's, what's the name here? The, uh, we know more or less SQL, but I mean the focus uh, of, of of this course is not the you know SQL. So set uh, set the text uh, equal as equal uh, use the question mark because of the injection that you just saw before right so respondent uh, with a score date date yeah data is a bit uh, um, you need to pay a little bit of attention. You need to decide what to store in the database. Okay. There are also SQL functions. I'll probably remove it from the solution. I don't like it that much. They take a string and they transform it and check if it's a correct date and so on. But actually in SQL Lite, uh, you see the definition. We define the date. Uh, no, we define data as date, sorry, that, that's the type in the SQL, sorry. I was thinking that we store data as a string, but uh, you are free to, you know, to do the conversion wherever you like. You would like to to have the information stored in, in, in terms of strings, you are free to do that, okay? No problem. The database is something you decide as well for the project, for the final project, okay? In big projects, probably this is given, so you don't... You don't have this option, okay? But uh, in small projects, you do everything, so so that's fine. Uh, date, so we need to transform it into a date uh, type uh, for SQL, and then where 
uh, we were saying id equal to something okay uh, because we need to run the update only on on a certain row of the, of the table text respondent score date and id okay they match the question marks and it's fine okay uh, db run remember a typical error is uh, using all but this is not a, a select so this is run okay and when you use run remember to use function and not the arrow function keyword function because so you get uh, this value this is not the last id but it changes okay there are two things that uh, run uh, returns the last id if you modify the id or they created the id and changes the number of affected rows so in short uh, if the the update works this is one and if it doesn't work it's zero okay so we reject in case of error and we resolve with the value uh, of uh, changed rows uh, if everything is working okay so let's say index let's see if the, if the rest works so this is not a new id this is uh, uh, what i put in the solution um no put here uh numero changes but i mean you, you can write uh, whatever you want Number change changes. Okay, of course you need to update the rest. Number changes. Okay. Mm, we say that we return to two hundred. Okay. We could also return the whole object. That's fine. I mean, but we decided differently. Okay. So we finished the, the implementation, right? So. Um, so we can test it. Let's test it. Always test the stuff before you you write a lot of code, okay? Because you catch errors early, or if you didn't think about something, you 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 know it earlier, okay? So uh, node mon. Let's use node mon just in case I change something, uh, so I don't forget to restart. Index. So I saved all the files. Don't forget to save the files. That's another very common error. But it doesn't really matter with the course. I mean, this is just common sense. And then let's try the API. So it's already there. The put. Uh, sometimes it, it's not clickable. I don't know why. Uh, probably it's a small bug of this, uh, you know, extension. But you click uh, somewhere else, and then it uh, and it works. Send the request. Yes, it's been updated. The return is one. So one row was changed. Everything is fine. Okay. So we implemented a new API. You see, it's not that difficult. Uh, that's actually what you did yesterday, more or less. Now let's come to a more interesting part. Okay. So this morning we talked about validation. So let's try to add the validation, which is the new topic for today and the topic for next lab. So index, okay, um, we can go back to the slides. I always use the slides as a guide, okay? And if you, if you need a start, okay? Or the examples that, that I already published. Uh, for the moment, there's nothing yet, okay? But uh, at the end of this lecture, there will be the whole example. So for, for next tab, you also have the exam. So a second parameter, we can have an array with some validation. Let's try to do some basic validation in this put, okay? So, um, so here we open an array, okay? And uh, um, we put check. What's the basic validation here? I mean, uh, well, that's an ID. Uh, it doesn't make sense to have an ID which is not integer, right? Should be an integer and should be uh, greater or equal uh, to one, greater than one or equal to one, right? So check ID dot uh, is int. Uh, okay, it doesn't complete. Uh, 
probably I didn't import yeah express validator okay so I suggest you that uh, if you would like to use a module in the beginning okay you you first uh, uh, put it in the code and then uh, write the code because uh, you know the Visual Studio code helps you a, a bit uh, more okay so if it knows what you are trying to do const uh, let's just copy from the slides so uh, no there's no example in the slides sorry there will be an example anyway we'll import it like this that's why I have the code here so I don't forget uh, you can import it like this. Uh, yeah, there are different things you can import. We will talk more about this when we talk about models. We just uh, use uh, this uh, um, this way of doing things at the moment. Validation result. So in short, we import only two things uh, from to separate things uh, from the uh, module. Require the express uh, x press validator okay save okay the app crashed the why because it doesn't find the module right so we need to stop it well there's also some something <laughs> which i typed wrong npm install express express validator okay now i can run it uh, there's something mistyped uh, somewhere 51 yes sorry okay there's still something wrong because i didn't finish to type right yes okay so let's stop the server for a moment is uh, int so you get the suggestion that's why i imported the model before typing the code right doesn't always work but uh, you know sometimes it works and it works also quite well but uh, um well we can finish like this just to have a look at the uh, single validation okay uh no i didn't save you see that's uh, the point here i didn't save so let's save it okay now it works. Let's send the request. Uh, uh, why does it? Okay. Okay. Nothing changed. Okay. And if we put uh, something which is not a number, I don't know, uh, ABC. Okay. Nothing changes. Why? Because we didn't use the validation result. You need to validate, it's fine, but you also need to get the, the result of the validation and decide what to do with the validation result. Okay? You remember the slide uh, was here? Okay? You need to get the validation result and decide what to do. Okay? So just, uh, let's say, copy and paste from the slides, more or less. Okay? So, um before doing anything we will uh, check for errors so const errors uh, validation result uh, rec okay that's the way this uh, express validator works there's nothing to invent here just to use it okay copy and paste and then if Errors, which is an object actually, uh, is not empty. Um, is empty. Is empty. Okay. Here we need to s decide what to do. Okay. If the validation fails, we need to decide what to do in the callback. Okay. So in short, we should return something, right? So we should say res status not 200 because there's been a problem decide an error code so a status code of the http res um, status 
Mm, I typically like this 422, which is, uh, uh, what, what's the meaning? M D N uh, 422 HTTP status. Unprocessable content, okay? Any code of 400 something is fine, okay, for us. It could be the generic one, 400, I mean the 00, zero are the generic ones, still fine, okay? And then, if you would like to add something in addition, you can. You can return a body if there has been an error as well. So, uh, if we return something, please stick to this guideline. So, always return data in JSON format. So, JSON, and then we add an object or something that explains what, ha what is happening. Okay? Could be a single string, could be an object. I typically like an object because you can put uh, uh, properties and so on, so it's more flexible. Okay? Errors, uh, and uh, you can take this errors array. Okay, let's see if it works. So I saved. Let's try the request. Okay, errors. This is uh, the array that the Express Validator creates for us. Okay, if you want, you can personalize or you can change the, this behavior, but uh, I mean, I, you will look it into the example. Okay. We also have a crash that's, uh, yeah, okay. Now I, I'll come back to this point, okay? But uh, let's say something worked at least, right? We sent uh, something which is, was not an integer. Let's hide this, oh, okay. So we sent ABC and we got this 4 to 2 unprocessable entity, okay? Why it crashed? Because you, you see it says, uh, uh, HTTP headers are sent, okay? So you cannot send the body after you send the HTTP headers because basically you already sent the headers and the only thing you can send is body after you start sending the body. So actually this is a bit strange as an error, but I know where it is, okay? So uh, basically either we put all the rest of the code in an else statement, okay? Or we can simply put a return here. So there's nothing more that we need to do in this callback because we sent an answer back to the requester, okay, to the client. So if we stop with the return here, that's fine. Let's try. Let's see if I, I'm, I'm right or not, okay? So well, it does, doesn't okay okay now we didn't get the error by the way you see the morgan logging okay uh, and this is the error okay in a field whose name was abc the message is invalid value and in the params of the urls and so on okay i mean you don't really need all this stuff i mean the important thing because uh, this stuff, uh, uh, what are you using the body for? So the body is, you would like to show some errors to the client, okay? But actually in a, in a good client, this error shouldn't happen. So you, you actually don't really have anything to, to show to the client, okay? If it's an error that can happen, probably it should be a, a, a 200 okay and Actually, the API should specify what was the problem, okay? So what was the, actually it's a condition of your application, a state of your, of your application, not really an error. This is really an error because it's a validation error. Okay, so uh, can we add other validators? Yes, we can, okay? Uh, you should have a look at that page uh, that I linked from the slides you know, all the options, all the stuff. And you will look uh, basically at the solution that I provide to you, okay? We don't have time to type everything, okay? Um, so just uh, let's add something more just to show you 
you know, check uh, that, you know, this stuff, uh, note these are strings, okay? ID was in the URL. We can also check stuff that is in the body. Check checks everywhere, both in the params, in the body, and in the query, okay? There are more specific methods just focused uh, on single elements, okay? But check is a good uh, mm, compromise for the moment. So let's say, well, score is int, uh, you know, it's like uh, the other, okay? Respondent, okay? Respondent, okay? Uh, is length, okay? I don't want empty respondents. Let's say I decided in my application I don't want empty respondent fields, okay? I know you can write code, it's just a string and you go and write if and so on, etc. If you have a validator, just use it. Okay, it's very simple. Uh, is length and you will, uh, uh, you'll, you can have a look at uh, the option of the function is length in the express validator. I just tell you what are the options are. Basically, it takes an object with the constraints. So let's say min, min one. Okay. Let's, let's put it two, just to, to show you, okay? So, uh, API, so let's make uh, an update on five that should exist. Respondent is a B, okay? So it's present, just length one, okay? Let's send a request. You see error field value B in, uh, in the body and the path respondent, so the, the field is respondent. Okay, let's see, Bob, save, send, and now it works, okay? So, you just need to try to implement these kind of things. Just be careful, these are uh, formal validators, so actually they are the easiest to write, right? Because, you know, typically a date, uh, time, uh, uh, length, uh, integer, and so on, okay? If you need to have a, 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 a validator for the logic of the application, things might be more difficult. Like, is the ID valid? Is present in the database? You should, uh, you know, ask for the, ask the database. Okay, so DAO, get, uh, no, what was uh, list uh, answer? I don't know if I have a function to do this here. Uh, List questions, list answers by questions. I, I should have a, a function get answer, okay, with the ID, select uh, where ID equal to. Call that function, okay, get uh, get answer, no, get questions, sorry. No, this is a put, okay, well, we get answer, okay. Uh, rec params ID. That's the way I at, uh, I get the value of the ID in the path. Okay. Await. Okay. This is an asynchronous function. Either we put dot then or await. Okay. And decide on the basis of the return value. Okay depending on what we do in this get answer. If the answer exists, fine. Otherwise, uh, same as before, return, res, uh, status, error, and so on, okay? Well, actually, the put is not the best place to, to do this check because, uh, you see, the put uh, actually already does an update with where id equal to something, right? So, actually, the query does this check automatically. But uh, let's say you are inserting, you are inserting the answer. You would like to check if the question ID exists before inserting the answer, okay? So let's say this stuff should be put here in the put, okay? So before doing the rest, get get question, okay? And this is not rec params, a rec body question ID, okay? So const, uh, what's here? I did it, yes, result question. Result question. 
okay? I mean, this function doesn't exist yet. It's just a select. Uh, you can write it very easily. I, I will put mm, this stuff online. And then, if uh, result, uh, result question, uh, depends on what you return. Dot error, uh, because I wanted to return uh, the error this way. So a field like this. Res status. Boop. Whatever you want, <laughs> okay? 404, not found, it's fine. I mean, it's not just for the pages. JSON, uh, result question, mm, what, whatever you want, okay? You can also write uh, like this, error, and, so, and then we will finish, okay? Error, uh, question, not found, okay? Just don't forget, return, okay? Otherwise, we get uh, the same bug as before, okay? Just try it. Let me try it, and then, then we finish, really. Uh, question ID, I don't know, One, two, three, four. Probably doesn't exist. Okay, up crashed, something happened. Not ah, yeah, the get question is not, it's not implemented yet, okay? <laughs> if it's implemented, it will give you um, the uh, the answer uh, and we say if there's a, if the object is present or not and we return 404 or it goes on with the code okay I don't have more time but I hope you got the idea and next lab well first you finish your APIs okay uh, I will put the solution for lab 3 online so you don't have to spend time on finishing your APIs just have a look if you want to start working on validation. Next lab is specifically focused on validation. So you'll take the solution without the validation, the one that I will put online or yours, it's fine. And you start adding the validation, formal validation and logic validation. Injection, I hope you don't have problems of injection. You just use the question mark and you solve the problem, okay? Fine, so thank you, uh, no questions, right? Okay. So thank you for your attention.